So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the lecture series, the motivational lecture series of the Institution Innovation Council of the University. Uh, today we have uh, uh, a, a young uh, entrepreneur with uh, years of experience in uh, pharmaceutical industry. Uh, he is going to share his experiences about uh, the opportunities and challenges in bio entrepreneurship. Uh, before we uh, request our speaker to uh, present his uh, uh, talk, I would like to introduce the panel members of today's webinar. We have with us the Honorable Vice Chancellor of our university, Professor Dr. Satish Kumar Bandari. Uh, sir is someone who is extremely proactive in any activity that is concerning research and innovation. And uh, Sir always makes uh, it sure or makes it possible for him to be available at um, uh, at every every talk or every meeting that we conduct. So thank you so much, Sir, for your support, for your uh, involvement, and for your inspiration. Uh, you have been uh, inspiration for all of us, and uh, you have been motivating uh, the people at this university to uh, make some changes, to bring in some changes in this field. We also have uh, the president of the Institution Innovation Council, uh, Dr. Sriniketan. Sir, welcome to you, sir. Uh, sir is the four ma main person behind uh, the activities of the Innovation Council at the university. And uh, sir has been organizing several events, um, not only the webinars and uh, motivational sessions, also a lot of other um, events, including hackathons and ideathons and uh, so on. So it's been a very wonderful uh, association with uh, the Institution Innovation Council. We, uh, the constituent colleges uh, of the university, we feel uh, really happy and uh, feel extremely motivated to be a part of the activities. Uh, thank you, sir, for being here and thank you for taking part. Uh, so we will formally welcome our speaker, uh, in a short while from now. I also welcome other members of the Institution Innovation Council of the University. Uh, I, I have my colleague, uh, Dr. Sudarshan, who is the coordinator of the Student Innovation Club of Nuxa. I can also see my colleague, Dr. Smitha and uh, Mr. Vivek, who has also joined us on uh, the Zoom um, link directly. All our participants, they will be joining us uh, through uh, the YouTube link uh, that has been shared through our Nikte YouTube channel. So without uh, much delay, I would now request uh, Professor Sriniketan to welcome uh, the, uh, the invitees and uh, the, uh, the dignitaries. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Anibon. Um, respected Vice Chancellor of the Nikte Deemed University, Professor Dr. Satish Kumar Bandari, sir. Our resource person for the day, Dr. Ragvi Ramchandra, Dr. Anibban, the coordinator of this program, Dr. Sudarshan Kenny, and members of the council. It's my pleasure to welcome each one of you for this uh, another important activity of the Nitid University. Our Institutional Innovation Council, which was set up last year, December, has been assigned the task by the Honorable Vice Chancellor and the management of the Nitidium University to arrange several activities pertaining to incubation, entrepreneurship, ideas, patent, IPR, and so on. And uh, 
normally we say top management commitment is uh, very much necessary for the success of any activity i am very glad that the management of netted university and represented by our honorable vice chancellor professor dr satish kumar bandari is in the forefront of each one of the activity and uh, he participates in all the activities and gives lot of ideas and he motivates as a mentor several faculty non teaching staff of the university and student to take up this as a career and uh, be a job provider rather than a job seeker so sir on behalf of the innovation council and all members who have assembled here i heartily welcome you sir for this important motivational session uh today's uh, resource for sir dr uh, ravi ramchandra uh, he has chosen the topic of uh, the challenges uh, in bio entrepreneurship dr uh, ravi ramchandra will be formally introduced by his friend dr anibon later but of course he has already said he is into entrepreneurship from 1978 uh, um i was thinking this uh, every question this entrepreneurship is it to create quality of life or to create wealth or is it both so now the question is uh, in our uh, university we are providing the ecosystem for our young minds for a lot of abundant ideas and potential to come up with some ideas and later some concept later some technology we are going to provide them in that uh, aspect the ministry of education government of india has asked us to speak to some successful entrepreneur like uh, dr raghuvi to come to the, our university talk to our young minds so that they will be getting motivated inspired by their talk inspired by their uh, uh, success in the field and today dr raghuvi who is an entrepreneur she uh, entrepreneur himself in the field of biotechnology so which is integration of life sciences and uh, business i think he will tell us the challenges how to mix both the knowledge in the life sciences he has got how he has been able to mix up with the business aspect so we have to know both the disciplines this a multidisciplinary aspect is a very challenge of course uh, he is going to talk to us uh, his uh, career path and how he has become a uh, entrepreneur with lot of success in his startup and um, uh, university is also in the process of uh, interacting with bayrak they are also talking about bioness uh, we are interested to set up some incubator here in that aspect also dr raghuveer will be of much use to us i think dr anil ban will be of use uh, when he interacts with dr raghuveer to see that and uh, netted in the university sets up a, a bio incubator at the earliest here because we have a very very active research group in the form of nuxer life sciences group we are also bringing our nete engineering college where biotechnology is there they will also be part of the nete university shortly so we'll have a healthcare we have agriculture we have a nete atal incubation center we have biotechnology agriculture and internet of things or computer so we are that is a focus point there so i think dr raghuveer will be able to help us in setting up this bio incubator take up this ideas to the next level on behalf of the institution innovation council and netted university sir i welcome you for this motivation thank you for accepting our invitation i must thank specifically dr anil ban who is the brain behind this activity of the innovation council uh, welcome dr anil ban uh, for also helping us in um, bringing dr ravi to this um, uh, motivation lecture i also thank uh, the other members dr sudarshan kini dr smita ek of nuxer mr vivek pai and all my members uh, from the innovation council who are part of this uh, and uh, i was told a uh, large number of students have registered they are um, now on youtube it has gone live now they'll be uh, waiting to listen to the eminent uh, this, uh, resource person in the form of dr ragvi on behalf of the innovation council i welcome each one of you and uh, hope our student friends and the faculty will get inspired uh, uh, by the presentation by dr ragvi and uh, ragvi ramchandra thank you all
Thank you very much. Over uh, to Anil Bhatt. Opening remarks. Um, I would now like to request uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to share his thoughts. Over to you, sir. Please. Sir, can you please unmute yourself? Muted me. Okay. Oh, yes. Now I am I'm audible now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, it's my privilege to be part of this very interesting webinar. Uh, organized by the Institution Innovation Council and uh, in collaboration with our uh, NITA University Center for Science Education Research. Uh, very distinguished speaker, as Anirban said, very young and dynamic uh, Dr. Raghavi Ramachandra, founder and director of uh, Galor uh, TX Pharmaceutical Private Limited and president of our very vibrant Institution Innovation Council Professor Shini Ketan and very dynamic director of uh, our NUKSAR, uh, Dr. Professor Anir Ban and uh, Dr. Sudarshan, then Smita and Pai and others and uh, my faculty from Nittai Dream to University, dear, dear students. It's indeed uh, a special day for all of us because we've got a very dynamic uh, young uh, entrepreneur, Dr. Raghavir addressing our students and faculty. In the, uh, about six months back, I still remember uh, uh, Mr. Ullas Kamath from Jyoti Laboratories. I think we started this motivational session by very uh, dynamic uh, entrepreneurs of the district. I don't know whether Raghavir also from our district, uh, but we had uh, Ullas Kamath from Ullas Lab our Jyoti Laboratories. He addressed our students. It was really, indeed, it was a uh, really very motivational talk by Ullas. I think we are also going to have a such a wonderful session today also from Dr. Uh, Raghvir. Uh, and I should congratulate him selecting the topic, opportunities and key challenges in bio entrepreneurship and uh, quoting his success in the starting of pharmaceutical company. I was going through his uh, biodata. Uh, it's wonderful. I think it really it's a motivation. I think all our young colleagues should read, uh, go through his biodata. A young researcher and uh, entrepreneur has done so much in such an young age. And definitely, is uh, I, I should congratulate the Innovation Council and Anirban for selecting such a person to address our students. Uh, for any country to prosper economically, innovation, intellectual property right, and entrepreneurship is very, very essential. And uh, the best example, I always quote Germany. I understand that Germany was uh, mainly a agrarian based economy in the early part of 19th century. And uh, consciously they decided to start universities with a specific mandate to foster research and innovation among the youth. And one of the universities, Berlin uh, University, they started during that period. And the rest is history. I think we know now that Germany, how it became such an industrialized and prosperous nation and powerful country. And still it is a, one of the most in, uh, advanced industrialized uh, nation with a lot of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship and innovation. That is the uh, story behind its success. In India, we are always, I will always say this uh, fact that we have got more than thousand odd universities and 50,000 colleges. And definitely, yes, we have succeeded in creating very large uh, knowledge society. But uh, when we talk to the industry people, the uh, biggest uh, complaint or grouse against our universities is we are successful in creating knowledge society, but uh, the people who come out or the students who graduate from the universities are not ready to get employed because without a proper required skill for their particular job. So our main objective of our university should be to create, to convert this knowledge into skill, wisdom, innovation, and uh, intellectual property. I think as uh, Shiniketan rightly said, we should create more, more job givers than job seekers. But always we debate, well, I think this is again a debatable issue, whether the entrepreneurs are born or they are created or made. And certainly, yes, 
fifty uh, percent of the entrepreneurs are born. It is there in their DNA. But rest fifteen, fifty percent or more than fifty percent can be created or cultivated by training and honing their entrepreneurial skills. And definitely, this type of motivation talk is one of the methods of uh, honing the skill of entrepreneurship. Uh, when you are talking about entrepreneurs, always I give the example of our district, district, and uh, and our people are uh, known for innovation and entrepreneurship. And uh, uh, you may be knowing that more than four uh, larger nationalized banks were created in this district, and uh, you know the Udupi success of Udupi hotels. And all uh, the people who have migrated from our district to other places, particularly Mumbai and uh, Bangalore. They created the uh, hotel industry, hoteling, and uh, and uh, now the, you know that uh, Udupi brand is popular world over, and they got uh, many people have started in the name of Udupi hotels, and uh, there's one of the very important uh, uh, mode of uh, uh, I think entrepreneuring in the uh, world, and uh, this all depends uh, on the entrepreneur skill of this particular district. And now the you know that Dakshinada district is known for educational institutions. Now it has become an education hub. Name any program you have got uh, courses in this district. All this shows that entrepreneurship is being cultivated or honed in this particular district. And we should do more. I think universities like us should work towards creating youth with entrepreneurial bent of mind. The, regarding coming to the theme of today, bio entrepreneurship, I think uh, it's very relevant to to our university because we are dealing with the health related uh, institutions and science related institutions and research. So this concept is uh, that new the new trend which is needed for this country, the need of the hour for this country, and uh, as uh, Sriniketa said, it's a blend or integration of science and business. But compared to engineering by inter, uh, inter, uh, entrepreneurship, by inter, uh, entrepreneurship is more tough, according to me, because uh, this requires a really high standard of setup for research and innovation, and uh, even the motivated people. Because we got a lot of examples. I think uh, Shriniketan will agree with me that we are trying to get ideation and hackathon camp related to science. By medical research, it's becoming very difficult to get a single pers a person to come out with the innovative or idea, new idea. Because there's some sort of uh, uh, yeah, inertia in this particular area of bio-internship in this, our country. Uh, but it has got real, very huge uh, uh, potential, I think. I think uh, it has got really social relevance also. Bio-internship has got social relevance because we are developing techniques techniques to protect environment from diseases in the area of fuel and uh, feed the hungry how to elevate alleviate the hunger of the country and various other product preparation to save the li live, uh, living beings and these products uh, provide new and better ways and minimize the side effects in detection, cure, and uh, prevention of harmful diseases. So that's a lot of relevance for uh, bio entrepreneurship, and particularly very, very important for our country, like us with 1.30 uh, uh, population, crores of population, and this uh, uh, 1.3 billion population, I think we should work towards honing bio entrepreneurship in the country. And I hope you will have very, very uh, interesting webinar and uh, very motivational talk by the young researcher, Dr. Raghuveer. And uh, you know, the challenges of this entrepreneurship is entrepreneurs is many in our country, particularly getting capital, getting the team, finding the right location, finding the right employers, employees, finding good customers, overcoming the competition, keeping with the recent trends and changes uh, in the what is happening in the industrial scenario. A lot of challenges. I think uh, this particular issue, Raghuveer knows better than us. I think he'll be able to elaborate during his talk. I, I congratulate uh, 
once again dr raghavir ramachandran for reaching the greater heights in entrepreneurship particularly pharmaceutical industry again it's a challenge i think he has reached that uh, level because of his hard work and definitely will motivate our young researchers faculty and students in this area of entrepreneurship i wish you all the best and hope we'll have very fruitful deliberation and you will have even question and uh, i think I, i hope you got that interactive session also in the end i hope all of you will carry present memories of this uh, uh, webinar thank you very much thank you so much sir for your uh, inspiring uh, words uh, indeed uh, it's it's a it's 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 very clear that uh, for our university i think uh, we need to put the right steps forward and i think with the support of the management i'm sure um, we are looking at good days ahead uh, so before uh, raghuveer sorry for keeping you waiting but it is customary that i introduce you to the audience because um, those who have uh, read your cv they are aware of your accomplishments but i think uh, for the larger audience who has not uh, heard about you or other who are willing to hear from you they should know who you are so raghuveer is someone who has followed the classical path of an academician he started with uh, uh, bsc msc phd and he did all of that including a post doc um, and then he decided to come out of uh, the academics and enter into a uh, industry so that's uh, a great uh, uh, risk uh, many academicians don't take but uh, raghuveer with his uh, business acumen that he had behind his uh, in in addition to his academic credentials i think that uh, led him to take this decision uh, i will start with his journey very briefly i will uh, introduce you uh, to the audience so he uh, did his phd from the us uh, from west virginia university in the us uh, he completed his phd in 2007 before that he was associated uh, uh, with the indian council of agricultural research and then uh, he also uh, did little bit of work on uh, uh, you know uh, molecular uh, particularly molecular research in uh, food food industry in the in the, the aquatic uh, food industry uh, after his phd he joined as a postdoc in the city of hope research center in la in california uh, he worked for about a month about a year and then he joined as a consultant scientist uh, in uh, origin uh, discovery technologies which is a fully owned subsidiary of the redis lab that we commonly know about and there his journey started in the industry i think he joined as a consulting scientist he got uh, to the level of associate scientist he worked as an associate scientist for about 4 years from october 2008 to 2000 march 2012 and then he served as a pharmacology team leader Uh, from 2012 to 2018 and uh, after that he set up his own company the gallo pharmaceuticals private limited uh, so in his position in his capacity as a team leader in the in vivo pharmacology at origin drug discovery he was looking or uh, rather he was guiding the team for screening uh, small molecule uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors which are basically immune immuno immuno therapy related drugs meant for um, diseases linked with inflammation and cancer and uh, he has continued this uh, discovery process in his company gallo biotech uh, or gallo pharmaceutical private limited is a recipient of elevate 100 and big 50 grant from government of india and government of karnataka uh, so that itself shows the potential of his company uh, he is the founder director of gallo uh, pharmaceuticals and they are now focused on discovery and development of novel therapeutic small molecules uh, which are uh, linked to the immune system basically the target the immune system uh, so he has led uh, gallo biotech or gallo pharmaceutical to a revenue generating small biotech because in bio entrepreneurship it is a amalgamation of uh, science and business or science and Uh, you know revenue proportion so uh, he is also leading the strategic and growth opportunities he is mm, providing the overall uh, uh, leadership to gallo pharmaceuticals 
uh, to uh, manage and to, to, to manage the business and the operations, and including the scientific and technical aspects. Uh, for an uh, entrepreneur like Raghu, um, um, he has over um, 25 publications in various important journals, and I see that he's still publishing, even, even, even he's in the industry, which is again, uh, quite encouraging. He has received several awards. Um, uh, he has a postdoctoral award from City of Hope National Medical Center. He's an honorary membership award in uh, Gamma Sigma Delta in US. Um, he's got a graduate uh, assistantship from USDA um, on a genome project that he did on um, an aquatic species. Um, and of course, he has several other awards, including that I mentioned, the Elevate 100 and the Big 50 from Government of India. Uh, so his core competencies uh, uh, um, will make uh, an active researcher uh, feel insecure because uh, he has the competencies in almost everything that are important in the field of bio, in a pharmaceutical and the biotech uh, field. Um, absolutely, it's an absolute delight, Raghu, to have you today and to um, uh, uh, to, to, to be with you, uh, to listen to your journey as an entrepreneur. Uh, thank you once again on behalf of the university and uh, over to you. Uh, sorry, I'm calling you Raghu because I know you as Raghu. So over to you, Raghu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Anivan, Dr. Srinikesh and Professor uh, Satish Kumar Bhandari. Uh, it was very kind of you um, to invite me here uh, and uh, you have set the stage. I, I really hope uh, I live up to your expectations. Um, I'm just sharing my screen here. So. Um, um, okay, so uh, I um, uh, started as a researcher, as an academic uh, researcher, and then uh, moved to industry and then uh, to entrepreneurship. So uh, today I'm going to just share my uh, experience and my uh, thoughts uh, from my experience. And all that I am um, going to relate is uh, purely uh, one point of view from my uh, experience point of view. So uh, may not be all uh, absolute truth but uh, it's only my perspective uh, so uh, like any um, uh, any, any um, uh, scientist uh, we started with uh, uh, you know uh, starting working on a scientific problem and uh, eventually we realized that there is a significant market opportunity and uh, it can be um, it can stand on its own legs and it has a, a proper uh, um, uh, market to it and then uh, we started developing a, a, a business plan and eventually realized that and now we have um, um, we have a, a thriving biotech uh, startup uh, and uh, we have some results from uh, our uh, own discovery program that I want to share uh, towards the end so um, uh, please feel free to uh, 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 chat in the chat box or uh, uh, ask questions in the end uh, I'm happy to um, uh, answer uh, answer them all. Uh, if not now, uh, eventually drop me an email or uh, call me. Um, so uh, this is the story so far for uh, Gallo TX. Uh, a lot to be continued at some point, uh, but uh, uh, I, here I begin. So uh, in uh, my previous employer, uh, Dr. Reddy subsidiary called Origin Discovery Technologies, uh, we uh, set out to uh, discover novel drugs for treating cancer. Cancer, as you know, is a, is a failed immune system that uh, uh, you know uh, fails to detect cancer as cancer, and it assumes that it is a normal tissue. And so um, uh, there are um, uh, pathways that are uh, broken uh, where immune system effectively detects cancer as a, a malignant tumor, but it assumes that it is a part of the body, normal healthy tissue. So we wanted to break that interaction so that uh, a drug can go and break this um, uh, you know, wrong uh, uh, assumption from the immune system that uh, the cancer is not harmful for us. Uh, so, that, um, so that the immune system itself uh, can take care of the cancer. So uh, these are called uh, immune checkpoint, immune, inhibit, immune uh, therapies, immunotherapies. Uh, and one class of immunotherapy is the immune checkpoint inhibitor. And we developed this uh, molecule over a period of uh, five, six years. Uh, and it showed a very nice uh, in vitro activity and then in vivo activity. Uh, if you see here, 
uh, it shows a, in, in an animal model, in the mouse tumor model, it shows significant tumor growth inhibition uh, compared to awake to control. So I, I promise this is one of the only uh, purely scientific slides. Uh, I will try to talk about uh, uh, other aspects of uh, science and business in, in, in the next slides. So, uh, okay, we identified this. It showed really nice efficacy. It was advertised to a, a bigger company for uh, upwards of $200 million. Uh, it is right now currently in uh, phase three clinical trials. Uh, it is showing uh, good efficacy and safety data in the first two clinical trials. Um, and it is progressing really well. So, um, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a person, as an individual contributor to the whole project, there are a lot of things that are involved in a drug discovery project. Um, uh, and uh, the role that I have played in this uh, is, uh, uh, you know, only uh, what one person can play. So there are uh, uh, a lot of moving pieces, moving parts in this uh, drug discovery engine. And uh, we realized in, in somewhere along the way that uh, uh, it is possible to contribute significantly and, uh, um, and uh, it is possible to market this kind of uh, drug discovery uh, uh, preclinical uh, uh, proof of concept uh, uh, ideas uh, in an effective way to other companies because big pharma companies, large and medium sized pharma companies in Europe and uh, US, they constantly look for in licensing this kind of molecules from small companies because they always have more capacity to take them forward. Their own discovery engines, their uh, in house discovery engines don't produce enough. Uh, so they always keep looking for uh, in licensing opportunities and our expertise is, of course, in um, you know developing preclinical assets, preclinical molecules, where uh, there is a, a significant uh, proof of uh, efficacy and safety. So that was the uh, basically the genesis of uh, Gallo Therapeutics. We wanted to um, uh, always have something on our own, some, something um, uh, of our own uh, um, existence, so that um, uh, we can uh, take quicker decisions. It is not just uh, making money. Um, uh, starting a business is uh, 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 making money is just an end result of uh, uh, creating a, a product that somebody else is uh, willing to pay for. So making money is not the, um, the goal. It is just an end result at some point of time, hopefully. And uh, uh, so um, when we decided to start a business, two of my colleagues and me, uh, we obviously had uh, uh, multiple challenges. So how do you support this business until uh, uh, the uh, business generates its own uh, income? As you know, as you, sir, um, uh, has point pointed out rightly, uh, the uh, path for revenue for a biotech uh, company is five, seven, ten years sometimes. So how do you uh, keep yourself alive until you see this, uh, uh, you know, the revenue generation? So there are multiple opportunities that we looked at. These are all challenges. I, I, I have listed them as challenges, but uh, we also have to look at them as uh, opportunities because uh, unless you look at them as opportunities, uh, they only will look as uh, challenges. So there are government support uh, that are available. Um, now we looked at them, but uh, they, uh, uh, they were not readily available. Uh, they always uh, wanted to uh, look at some kind of preliminary data that has already been generated uh, and the venture funding and institutional support and angel uh, funding networks. So these kind of uh, uh, funding ecosystem is basically not available in India. It has not well formed in India yet. Um, so uh, we have to look at uh, funding as a challenge uh, and as an opportunity because, okay, you, you can put your savings and, uh, you know, you can put some uh, money together, take some business loan, but that can only take so far. So, uh, so you have to come up with a creative way of funding your own business. I'll come to that in a little, little while. Um, uh, but government support was visible, but not readily available to us. Um, uh, of course, there are a lot of compliance requirements that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, very important for uh, um, uh, a, a company. Uh, for all the uh, biotech startups. Uh, the most important problem, in my view, is not the funding, but uh, the barrier for entry. What I mean by barrier for entry is uh, the uh, LCMS and the HPLC and the biosafety hood and the reagents and so many different things that we buy and use in our labs every day for our research. Uh, they are all um, uh, either imported or uh, 
in in and all of them are extremely expensive some of them some of these extra uh, instruments cost upwards of 50 lakhs so we came across some of the institutions called incubators uh, these are essentially um, uh, a government or a progressive institution like nite for example uh, they have put together a list of instruments in one place and ask uh, uh, all of these small small companies to come and use them uh, and pay a very nominal uh, uh, rent for uh, usage so what the, what what um, uh, is the advantage of this is Uh, it removes the it eliminates that problem for uh, startups you don't need to buy these expensive equipments you can just go there use them uh, pay a nominal entry nominal uh, uh, you know usage fee uh, and also there are um, um, uh, uh, program program specific funds that are available uh, being part of the incubator so these these kind of uh, um, uh, you know uh, institutional support uh, was already available when we started uh, started out so that way that removed the the barrier for entry for us uh, there are also uh, compliance requirements that i uh, talk about in a little while um, uh, that government is also working on uh, ease of doing business uh, improving the ease of doing business so another important uh, barrier is uh, trained manpower when you uh, look for this kind of uh, uh, high tech uh, drug discovery programs you absolutely need to uh, hit the ground running because you don't have time to um, fail uh, you need trained manpower so um, it is very expensive to hire a trained manpower from a uh, from a, a company uh, so in towards that governments have uh, you know started this kind of training programs called bicep from karnataka government and bcil from uh, dbt central government what they do is they pay the students to to work in your company uh, uh, so that you can train them you can uh, impart the skills that you uh, actually want in the industry and at the end of those 6 months where government is paying for these students uh, after that you can decide to uh, either hire them or help them find a job somewhere else so that gives us uh, you know that breathing space of uh, hiring somebody uh, training them and using their service for a certain amount of uh, time Uh, where you don't have to uh, spend on their salary and uh, other expenditure so this these are the um, challenges and how we try to uh, overcome um, these key challenges using um, uh, some of these innovative methods so in terms of financial support that i uh, dr anirban has already mentioned about all of this um, so uh, some of the, i uh, i'm very proud to say Uh, that we did not know anybody in any of these organizations and uh, uh, the bribe and all the other influence without any of those things we got all of this so uh, that must be a, a real motivation for us in in country like ours uh, it is not easy to uh, imagine that there is a government support to the tune of about 1 crore here uh, that you will get uh, without uh, exercising any of those uh, uh, you know under the table dealings so Uh, there are schemes there are people uh, there are uh, initiatives uh, across governments across institutions where uh, who are willing to support you for what you are what your merit is so uh, these are some of the uh, encouraging facts uh, that we all should uh, keep in mind so this is this is all goes into uh, what sir was mentioning that there is an inertia so it is it is uh, inertia is definitely one part but also Uh, you know not knowing that there is a lot of support uh, for this kind of initiatives is is also uh, uh, what is holding people back so uh, so there are uh, there are a number of compliance requirements from a government point of view uh, i would like to um, group them in uh, in two groups um, two important buckets and those are uh, some things can be sorted out using some kind of a software Uh, for example the gst and the um, uh, ministry of corporate affairs or uh, um, you know bookkeeping or income tax department or all other things can be sorted out or at least kept track of using some kind of a software uh, but there is another bucket where uh, you cannot use a software to keep track of or take help from for example this biosafety committee or uh, animal ethics committee or uh, pollution control board laws or labor law some of these things um, you have to uh, you know sweat it out and uh, uh, have uh, your entrepreneurship uh, uh, skills come out and solve those uh, 
uh, and also there are other requirements like bookkeeping and protecting uh, your ip which you have generated uh, uh, with your hard work uh, so that uh, uh, you eventually benefit from all of those so um, i'll not go into uh, some of the other details but uh, just to say that uh, it is very important to keep track of these things uh, from day one so how did we uh, so it was important for us to uh, when we are talking to potential investors or granting agencies or collaborators potential customers it was important for us to uh, position ourselves in a unique position so that um, you know we can uh, um, uh, benefit from from the other party so um, it was important for us to uh, uh, work for uh, a problem that is unique to our country um, uh, unique to our uh, ecosystem uh, and also uh, has a market overseas as well because uh, funding mostly eventual licensing and funding comes usually from uh, uh, western countries so uh, the problem we decided to address was uh, that the biologics the monoclonal antibodies or uh, uh, recombinant proteins that are used for targeting uh, protein protein interaction uh, in cancer therapy or inflammation for example in uh, um, rheumatoid arthritis uh, these are all antibodies or recombinant protein they are uh, they have uh, serious uh, uh, you know shortcomings for example they all need to be administered as intravenous drugs uh, this needs hospitalization is discomfort for the patient Hospi uh, hospitalization adds to the um, uh, the cost of the uh, treatment and of course these um, uh, antibodies remain in the blood in the body for weeks at a time so if there is an adverse event if uh, toxicity is uh, encountered by the patient it is very difficult to uh, you know to, uh, uh, get rid of that toxicity because of the drug so the patient suffers not because of the disease but the drug itself uh, so that is because of the drug over exposure and uh, in terms of uh, in, in specifically in the case of tumor uh, these antibodies or these large molecules don't reach the target site very efficiently because these are large molecules uh, and uh, because of that the response is suboptimal uh, and of course uh, cost of production for these um, uh, uh, large molecules is extremely high uh, 20 to 30 fold high uh, 2000 percent uh, higher compared to a small molecule so we decided to um, you know address all of the shortcomings by developing a small molecule um, uh, inspired from uh, the protein sequence a small molecule that addresses all of these uh, 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 shortcomings so uh, there was a need because these uh, uh, therapies cost uh, about uh, 100000 dollars a year per patient and uh, um, how many of us um, in this country can afford that kind of cost one yuvraj singh or uh, one movie actor can go to um, uh, i don't mean to take any name here but uh, there are many movie actors actresses or sports persons uh, personalities go overseas and get these treatments and come home safe but how many of us can do uh, do all of this we have to even if we sell all of our home and all the property we still cannot afford those um, treatments so there is a need for uh, a safe and effective uh, oral and affordable treatment option so what we do is uh, we look at these protein protein interactions there are uh, 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 several of these uh, uh, protein protein interactions that are uh, defective in these uh, disease conditions there is a receptor and a, and a ligand that they interact because of which uh, this is a faulty interaction and we want to break this interaction so we look at this interface look at these amino acids we look at, um, at the interactive amino acid hotspots where they interact with each other and we design our pharmacophore we design a peptide that disrupts this binding so that eventual signaling is um, disrupted so we call that as a pharmacophore modify that in uh, uh, in multiple ways to achieve it, uh, a safe and efficacious uh, molecule that can be developed as a uh, drug further so this is basically what uh, what is highly differentiated for us uh, not many people do this kind of uh, approach uh, traditional uh, um, traditional drug discovery approaches have failed because of their reliance on uh, 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 library based uh, drug discovery approach whereas we we design our uh, molecules very focused designs so we have few molecules and our molecules are designed based on these proteins because of which our uh, uh, probability of success uh, in eventually targeting that molecule is very high and since we have very few compounds to deal with we can directly go to a functional assay 
which is very relevant um, this is like looking at a um, you know actually the dog that bites rather than uh, uh, that barks so in traditional drug discovery what we do is we look at the binding assay that is a barking dog we don't know whether it actually is efficacious or not until we take it directly to functional assay whereas we can overcome that first step and directly go to a functional assay because we have um, fewer compounds to deal with we don't have a library of thousands of poly compounds but we have uh, you know focused designs and we have um, you know it is cost effective for us to directly go to functional assay in terms of therapeutic window um, uh, since these are peptides uh, they are very uh, safe they have a wider safety margin so the point of telling all of this is uh, a very unique approach a very um, you know unique selling proposition is ab absolutely required to um, uh, eventually succeed as a business so uh, as i told you before uh, the incubation period for uh, generating revenue for a biotech is 5 7 10 years sometime so how do you do how do you uh, sustain your business until that time uh, so for discovering and developing a molecule as a drug um, you know we design these molecules we synthesize them we purify them characterize them put them in in vitro studies in the cell line in the animals so all of these activities we can offer them as a service to other companies so they will give their molecules we can um, you know design them screen them or all these um, activities can be done for uh, uh, those um, um, you know those molecules and they will pay us uh, 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 part of their uh, uh, revenue as a uh, as a fee for our service so that can keep our uh, lights on they, that that will help us you know pay the rent and salaries and so on so uh, that kind of revenue model of uh, you know partnering at various stages uh, that we have employed to uh, generate revenue when when you have a cash flow that uh, you know eases a lot of burden on our capital requirement so uh, also it is very important to keep in mind that when when there is a service commitment uh, you know, and nowadays it is very easy to relate um, when you order something on amazon you want that to reach uh, you uh, within that stipulated time if you don't get it for a day you start feeling uh, uneasy right so the same with clients same with uh, people who have outsourced their work to you they obviously expect it uh, to complete on time um so what what that does is that takes the focus off of our actual objective of discovery and puts that on um uh, on the services project so uh, it is very important to keep uh, keep in mind that uh, our eventual objective is uh, internal discovery and not the uh, services uh, but on the other hand uh, services is what is feeding us so it is important to uh, do justice to both of them so um i'll just uh, come to the second business model first so uh, you may recognize some of these brand names here um, um uh, so we provide services to um, peptide synthesis uh, services uh, in vitro assay services to many of these uh, companies and uh, academic institutions some of them are uh, in the us some of them are in uh, europe some of them are, are uh, companies in india Uh, some small biotech companies uh, diagnostic laboratories in india uh, many of them are uh, academic institutions in india and overseas of course nih is an academic uh, non profit institution in the us so uh, uh, these uh, and this is not an exhaustive list i i cannot put uh, all of those uh, companies academic institutions here also because of confidentiality reason uh, we are working with uh, uh, three other uh, uh, medium sized pharma companies in europe um uh, and uh, so this this is what is helping us uh, generate revenue and uh, keep keep the um, uh, lights on as i said so uh, what is unique to us uh, we already just talked about significant lower cost is something uh, we always keep in mind because eventually we want to be relevant uh, in uh, uh, in this country and countries like ours Uh, while we provide the state of the art uh, treatment modality straight treatment options for uh, our patients um, so uh, there is a significant uh, market for this kind of uh, uh, projects uh, it, when i say this kind of projects so these are internal drug discovery programs that i just talked about so uh, every year 6 to 8 billion uh, us dollars worth of uh, preclinical assets are being uh, in licensed these uh, by these uh, big pharma companies um each of the program each preclinical asset uh, um, generates about 8 to 10 million uh, us dollars uh, in 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 current uh, day uh, and anyway so uh, 
uh, basically our uh, competition is uh, 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 to replace the monoclonal antibody. So monoclonal antibodies, although they are our competition, they already have a lot of uh, shortcoming. So that way we are very well positioned to uh, compete against them. So our first program that I want to share with is that this is an internal uh, discovery program. Um, so uh, I want to share it with you is uh, uh, this program targets a TGF beta pathway. So TGF beta pathway, as you know, uh, is a TGF beta is, a, is an important uh, uh, cytokine, and it, it it is its role in uh, tumor microenvironment is uh, uh, quite well established now. There is a, a well established. Uh, uh, clinical trial uh, that shows that uh, combining TGF beta with uh, uh, inhibitor with uh, other tumor uh, microenvironment modulators or um, immunotherapies uh, significantly reduces tumor in uh, in multiple uh, cancer indications. Uh, so TGF beta is involved both in angiogenesis, in EMT, in uh, immunosuppressive effect, effects. So there is a clinical proof of concept already with other inhibitors, other monoclonal antibodies, and uh, recombinant proteins so there is there are uh, uh, there are no small molecule inhibitors that directly target tgf beta in the market not even in the clinical trial not even in the preclinical research as far as we know so uh, we started out with uh, this uh, uh, problem and our one of the earlier molecules uh, had a potency of about 1 160 micromolar and uh, we based on our drug discovery approach we have uh, improved the potency from 160 micromolar now to uh, uh, 0.05 micromolar that is about 50 uh, nanomolar so this is uh, a pretty good pretty good compound so this is ready for uh, further profiling now in uh, animal studies in mouse uh, and uh, other disease models so now all we need to do is to show that um, this molecule is uh, sufficiently efficacious in, um, uh, in in a disease model so that work is uh, currently ongoing now uh, in our uh, uh, collaborators lab so i also want to uh, show you a little bit about a little bit of data about uh, our next program that targets uh, tnf alpha in uh, pathway so tnf alpha is uh, as you know is a uh, it's a growth factor um, a tumor necrosis factor uh, in full form so it um, uh, signaling tnf alpha uh, pathway is uh, very well established as a uh, therapeutic, you know, disrupting this uh, pathway is a, a very well established uh, therapeutic modality for treating a uh, uh, lot of immune related, uh, immune related inflammation indications, uh, like, for example, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, um, many other immune inflammation conditions. So, uh, there are approved monoclonal antibodies uh, that are uh, targeting TNF alpha and its receptor. Uh, so, they make I don't know, 10, 10, 12 billion dollars a year, those antibodies together. Uh, and uh, there are no small molecules. Uh, all of them have to be administered as IV drugs. They, the patient has to go to the hospital. Um, and there are side effects. And the, uh, the, the, the uh, side effect, if it causes serious damage to the, uh, I mean, the medical professionals uh, in this uh, audience, uh, can relate to the problems that are uh, associated with uh, monoclonal antibodies and their um, uh, uh, side effects and uh, shortcomings. Uh, of course, they are expensive as well. Um, so there are no small molecules that are uh, treated that are uh, currently in the uh, research or clinical trial. Um, so we started out developing uh, that, and uh, we have a compound that is about uh, submicromolar compound. Um, it is 700 nanomolar now. Uh, so, uh, what we um, uh, have started to do is, um, uh, you know, use, uh, instead of duplicating the resources, we have, uh, uh, you know, started to collaborate with other companies who are uh, experts in performing uh, in vivo studies in, in animals, uh, so that, you know, we do the uh, test tube uh, cell-based assays for them, and they do the um, in vivo animal experiments for us. Uh, so, that kind of arrangement um, and... Uh, uh, collaboration is uh, being that is uh, very fruitful so far for us so uh, i'm telling the story of our drug discovery programs but um, uh, the, the point of all of this is not to um, burden you with uh, scientific details but uh, to show that um, um, uh, we uh, we are uh, um, uh, moving in the right direction we have not been uh, able to out license that yet but 
we are in the process of generating enough data we have been talking to some of these uh, uh, big pharma companies and what they uh, what their expectation is um, uh, in in licensing this kind of molecule and uh, uh, we are addressing some some of those uh, um, issues some of those expectations uh, as we go so that uh, you know at the end of the uh, program we should not uh, uh, come back and uh, look at the drawing board to start from scratch so we are trying to address uh, all of those issues uh, from as we go as we go along uh, so uh, in terms of uh, 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 what are the um, uh, success stories if if you if, i mean i know uh, sir has already uh, named us as a as a success story uh, we have been successful in identifying some of these molecules and we are in the process of out licensing them i think if the uh, i i will count uh, these accomplishments as the successes only when um, patients uh, eventually get them in the pharmacy and uh, they uh, uh, you know uh, improve their health condition because of our molecules so until that time i uh, uh, i will only um, consider them as accomplishments uh, so uh, these are the this is the business model that uh, i was talking about so these are the two programs um, so this is the flow chart for us we uh, go up to lead optimization and uh, license these to other companies uh, so, so our first program is all the way uh, almost uh, 70 80% complete now um, and uh, second program is about a year behind that so um, in, in in conclusion um, i um, i hope uh, that i uh, uh, i uh, uh, stirred some stirred up some of the thoughts that you may be having um and uh, uh, hoping that i'm hoping that you uh, realize that there are plenty of opportunities need not be um, uh, in the in a different field uh, it, 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 there are opportunities in every field of uh, expertise your own field of expertise um because there are a lot of challenges for example i always uh, keep mentioning about one of the program that we are working on that i have not mentioned here um as you know uh, covid 19 came along about two and a half years ago and uh, uh, we are we are almost 7 8 months into uh, vaccination right so within one and a half years we got the vaccines and the reason is uh, all the rich countries are affected by this virus um, uh, I, there is a contrasting uh, situation in our own uh, uh, districts of uh, uh, shomogga and chikmagalur uh, there is a virus called uh, kasnur forest disease virus kfd virus and this virus was identified more than 30 years ago and uh, so far we don't have a treatment for that it is just uh, uh, you know a fever we treat with the uh, usual paracetamol combination um, you know if you have a headache you take an analgesic so this kind of uh, treatment modalities go on uh, poor farmers who go through uh, kfd who get this kfd infection kfd uh, disease kf disease um you know they uh, lose their productivity for uh, months together and years together sometimes and uh, so far there is no treatment modality and uh, we it, it, it is just uh, um, it is just not realistic to expect that um, um, somebody else sitting somewhere else in the world will come and solve our problem right we have to solve our own problem and these are some of the local problems that we have to work on ourselves Uh, unless we uh, make up our mind our ecosystem supports us our government should make uh, efforts to support our entrepreneurs our uh, you know teachers and uh, faculty should uh, you know look at the um, uh, talent and the ideas and support them to bring them to uh, you know a, a fruitful level so that it can be uh, you know marketed as a product um and uh, so this kind of system we all uh, need to contribute to uh, this kind of ecosystem so that uh, our uh, next generation can come up with ideas uh, solve our problems and uh, um, you know uh, make money out of uh, all of this in the in, on the way so um, i really appreciate uh, nite team to be university's efforts in uh, um, you know uh, setting up incubators Uh, and supporting uh, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, at least uh, also uh, you know bringing uh, people like me to uh, talk so that uh, uh, you know students uh, have some idea about what is possible what is also um, uh, feasible being in academics what can also be done uh, how else you can branch out and uh, get something done 
so um, uh, also i also would like to um, uh, highlight that nowadays being startup you know working for a startup is also becoming respectable earlier say 20 30 years ago government job was only the respectable profession uh, eventually 10 15 years ago infosys and wipro came along and uh, uh, that became uh, a respectable profession i think now um, uh, it is becoming uh, uh, you know reasonable to work for a startup or even start a startup so i think these are the changes that we are seeing and uh, a lot of uh, support from different angles are available uh, including from fellow entrepreneurs uh, so there has never been a better time to start uh, your own uh, um, you know biotech or a startup uh, related to life sciences so i really thank you all for your attention i'm happy to take uh, any questions if you have any feel please feel free to uh, contact me on any of these uh, um, uh, email addresses I think I saw a couple of questions in the chat room. So um, someone asks, um, how did you approach marketing uh, for your services to all those companies? So um, yeah, so here also uh, we had to come up with our own uh, uh, cost-effective way of uh, business development and marketing. So what we did is uh, there are some um, uh, services, some uh, uh, websites, some uh, uh, portals where. Um, you know they gave you the list of publications that are uh, uh, that mentions for example peptides uh, so if i am uh, my expertise is in synthesizing peptide uh, you can sort out uh, email addresses and uh, contact details of researchers who may um, uh, want peptide because uh, um, they have published something published some papers uh, that are that mention uh, novel peptide so Uh, we use some of those contacts to contact contact uh, you know the lists to contact some some of those faculty members to see whether they look for uh, they are looking for uh, synthesizing that right and uh, of course um, um, you know uh, your friends colleagues ex colleague uh, and industry contacts and see whether there are any uh, requirements so it is, we didn't have money to spend on marketing or uh, business development so you Uh, when you are pressed for uh, money and time and uh, resources uh, you <laughs> end up uh, uh, coming up with uh, creative solutions for uh, solving your problem so uh, somehow we are uh, able to develop a clientele to um, uh, sub- give us work so that we can support ourselves yeah hello sir thank you, thank you raghu so that's uh, that was wonderful listening to you and uh, all the challenges that you have explained uh, we do have a few more questions for you raghu if uh, sure yeah sure so um, so for all the information of the audience uh, galore is located in this beautiful building that he has shown here bangalore by innovation center and uh, we believe uh, few years down the line we have uh, a company uh, a building of yours uh, somewhere in bangalore raghu Uh, we wish you all the best on that. Yeah, and uh, it would be nice to have you in person in uh, Nitya. Sometimes uh, we hope uh, the opportunity will also come by. Uh, so one of the questions that was asked by one of the participants is about what are the challenges of having a startup in a rural center? Uh, apparently, all the startups that you see, they are always uh, coming up in big cities or in metro yeah. cities. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If you wish to do that. in a rural setup what could be the challenges yeah yeah so there are several challenges one is uh, the main one i see is uh, uh, the servicing of these instruments uh, 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 hplc or high end equipment when they break parts for those and the service engineers for those are usually not available in a rural area so even tier 2 cities uh, uh, it is very difficult it is challenging Uh, at least tier two cities is possible, although it is challenging. But uh, further down, probably it is very difficult to get uh, those kind of support. So um, at that time, you may have to um, end up um, either bringing that here and getting it fixed, or um, I don't know. You may have to come up with your own solution. That is that is probably one of the uh, most important challenge. Um, second thing is um, um, here uh, we can in a, in a big city. Uh, you can probably walk into uh, 
other some of these contacts and uh, some of these uh, your uh, customers or uh, potential customers and you know knock on their door and try to get some information uh, that may become challenging uh, in a rural setting although uh, in a rural setting you probably don't need that also you may be working on a problem that is specific to that particular rural area so in that case probably you don't face any of those problems uh, but uh, you know showcasing your business to uh, the outside world um, in a uh, in a showcaseable way uh, it is also very important to uh, gather funds or eventually market your idea sell it to somebody so that somebody can pay for it you, other people can utilize your solution for their problems uh, so uh, all those things becomes uh, a little challenging with communications uh, communication uh, uh, channels not being so uh, uh, you know uh, straightforward in rural setting so that is also another challenge um, also skilled manpower if you need a very specific set of skills for doing your business uh, that may also become a, a challenge uh, but if you are a team that you want to go there and do something uh, you better have a complementary skill set among yourselves so that uh, you don't your dependency on others uh, is reduced so that you can be self sustainable within that setting Thanks, Raghu. Uh, we have one more question for you. So at the end of your presentation, you showed a slide where you say how you, your, your pipeline, basically, yeah. and you yeah. say that you license it to other companies. So when you license your uh, discovery or your, uh, you know, product, how do you protect your IPR? Yeah. Yeah. So um, what we do is um, when uh, proof of concept, MIVO proof of concept uh, is established, we uh, file for a patent and that patent is licensed to other uh, big pharma companies that also uh, depending on the geography for example um, we can uh, file a patent here and uh, uh, license that patent and its use uh, for a customer in us a separate customer in in europe separate customer in southeast asia or asia pacific and we can also retain the rights for a particular geography like india for example that is what we intend to do although we sell the rights to us and europe uh, where uh, there is sufficient uh, funding we will we will get some funding from those uh, licensing opportunities but we want to retain the rights for uh, uh, our country so that uh, we have a significant uh, uh, role in telling what the uh, selling price should be for those drugs so that that kind of opportunities that kind of options you should still have so that um, you know you still have a say in it if you uh, uh, completely out out license it or sell it then you have nothing to do with it and that is such a shame so we want to retain rights to certain geographies like ours our own uh, so that we have some say in uh, how it is being marketed eventually if at all it is getting marketed okay uh, so uh... I have one comment, uh, Dr. Anirban. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead. go ahead. So to add to what he said, recently when I was talking to somebody from Bidar, Humanabad, Raichur, where the pharmaceutical companies are there, bigger ones, yeah. uh, as he rightly put it, family members of the skilled people are not ready to be there because there is no international school, there are no airports, there are many drawbacks of the logistics and infrastructure there. So the company owners are not able to get uh, skilled manpower there. Yeah. So, sir, I was impressed by your mantra. Uh, you have said persistence, hard work, honesty, teamwork, and scientific integrity. I'm very, very happy when you said, I'll be very happy when my molecule can cure the patients and that day you are waiting for. So let me wish you all the best on behalf of our Nitya Deep University. I had the opportunity to listen to you, learn from you, some of your key challenges. So we will have more interaction and uh, more fruitful uh, things uh, to come in the years to come through uh, Dr. Anil Ban and uh, his interaction with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Raghu, can you stop uh, sharing your slide if you don't mind? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. All right. So we have uh, uh, Dr. Sudarshan. Uh, so if there are no other questions, I think uh, that's it. Maybe uh, I'm sure the
people, participants on YouTube, they would have noted down your email IDs. And uh, we are hoping that uh, we will be able to involve Raghu in our academic programs as well. We are putting that, we have put that proposal up with the university, hopefully that gets approved. So uh, because we have started as, uh, uh, I must mention he was a Dr. Raghu. Okay, as Raghubir has mentioned, uh, I mean, as Raghubir probably doesn't know, we have changed our uh, uh, undergrad program into a four years program in line with the new education policy. And there is a, a you know, a definite uh, focus on innovation, uh, internship, research, full-time research. So one of the things that we'll have to do uh, in the fourth year is to have an indent industry internship. So I think uh, we need to probably have uh, certain uh, inputs from people like you on how to go about that. So I think uh, we will have more discussions on that. And uh, uh, before we uh, request Sudarshan to propose the vote of thanks, uh, so uh, uh, all the best. Uh, I hope uh, you come up with more discoveries. And uh, as you rightly said, you are making some sort of, um, you know, um, uh, replacement or uh, you know some uh, something which is uh, cost effective yet uh, has the same efficacy like a uh, monoclonal antibody so i think it's a very novel and very uh, unique way of going about and uh, yes i think for a country like ours where medical insurance is not mandatory where probably 60 to 70 percent of the population is still without a proper medical uh, you know insurance or uh, any coverage any sort of health coverage i think uh, uh, this sort of uh, changes will uh, be very much needed. So Dr. Sudarshan, please uh, yes, uh, request you to propose the vote of thanks. Yes, sir. So before going into vote of thanks, I have one last question uh, just would like to ask from my side uh, that uh, what do you suggest our uh, either MSc pass outs or uh, PhD pass outs that how they can start, uh, they have a startup company and what is the minimum budget is required if we have to uh, start with this kind of companies because I found that it is really motivating this uh, whatever you have developed uh, for targeting immune checkpoints and uh, bringing such a high IC50 values to very low IC50 values and uh, then targeting at uh, uh, in vivo level. I think definitely and this is a great motivation of course and our students are also having such kind of ideas but they don't know how to go about it. So what is your suggestion to our MSc and uh, PhD graduates? Yeah, so th there is no uh, uh, one number. I, I, I don't know if I can give you any one number, uh, but uh, uh, I would like to say, I would like to think that it is possible to start a company with, uh, um, uh, with zero. Uh, there are many uh, entrepreneurs that I know of, at least two, two, three of them, who have started with zero. They were just uh, recent graduates um, from uh, different, one is an engineering college graduate, one is, a, I think, an MSc graduate. Um, what they did is, uh, here is an idea. I mean, I don't think this is the only way to do it. Uh, there are multiple ways to do it. Uh, so uh, what they did is um, they put up a proposal. They made a, a, a project proposal with all the um, uh, required uh, uh, components of that proposal. Wh what is the problem they are trying to address? What is their solution? How unique is it? How do they want to protect their IP? Uh, what is it going to cost to you know, bring that idea to fruition? Uh, what are their target customers? Uh, how much are they going to um, you know uh, sell it for? What what is the target audience? All of these things, if they can, if they had did it, they put all of that together, and then they submitted it to uh, one of these granting agencies, Big and uh, uh, Elevate. Uh, Elevate is surprisingly uh, encouraging, encouraging uh, uh, this kind of ideas. They will fund you even if you don't have a, a prototype ready. So um, uh, that kind of opportunities are there. And there is one called Nidhi Prayas that I uh, I also received, and that is a, that is also available for that. That is uh, not even these are the, uh, the funding opportunities that I mentioned. They are um, uh, grant in aids, which means uh, they don't take any equity in your company. They don't. They are not loans. They they there is no limit. There is no commitment from uh, your side other than you successfully completing that project. Uh, uh, you know being fully committed to that project. So these kind of opportunities are already there. 
and also you can approach some of these big pharma companies big company who have csr um, uh, initiative um, if uh, your project is appealing to them they will fund it for you um, they may own certain part of the ip but they will still fund it for you um, so there are a lot of opportunities so uh, if any of you uh, have anything like that um, uh, please feel free to contact me or people like me uh, who will uh, instead of just keeping it with you please feel free and talk to somebody so that uh, you know you can get some more ideas of how to take it forward thank you sir so the, sure. yeah so thanks a lot so here i would like to propose my vote of thanks uh, i take this opportunity to express sincere gratitude to our uh, chief guest dr raghuveer ramachandra is a founder and director of galotex uh, pharmaceuticals private limited uh, for giving such a wonderful and uh, inspiring talk i should say and also the motivational story it was very nice sir thank you thanks a lot so we will expect uh, in future also we'll get some more information as well as uh, we'll get uh, ideas how to uh, build a startup and all thanks a lot sir and we are very grateful to our honorable vice chancellor professor dr satish kumar bhandari for all the support to organize this lecture and also yeah, he gave a, a, a very nice opening remarks about uh, uh, about patenting and all the technologies and how our nitte university supports uh, all these uh, functions and uh, through our iic so therefore i also would like to heartily uh, uh, show my gratitude towards uh, professor dr sriniketan president of iic uh, for taking his time out of his busy schedule and uh, being a part of today's program so i thank our director professor dr anirban chakrabarti uh, for uh, uh, i think for organizing this lecture and uh, also the very nice talk and also guiding guiding uh, this this kind of motivational talk so i thank you sir and uh, then i would like to thank all the staffs who supported directly or indirectly for uh, making this event successful and also extend my heartful uh, gratitude as well as uh, i am very thankful to like uh, all the in inspired participants and the students who actively participated i hope uh, they have received lot of information and uh, idea to how to do the startup and especially the biomedical and uh, those who are from uh, different uh, uh health background so or health and medical background so they have got the idea that uh, they might be having scientific knowledge but uh, they uh, they don't know how to uh, go about it for a start startup so uh, i thank one and all for being here today uh, the, that is uh, yeah uh, i think uh, yeah thank to all one all in one thank you sir before we end the meeting can we have your videos on please all of you just for a quick photograph with everyone mr vivek is there um, shriniketan sir has he logged out uh, okay dr smita is there ragu uh, uh, mr vivek is uh, coordinating the activities of uh, institution innovation council and dr smita is our colleague she is the deputy director of the institution uh dr raghu it was wonderful talking to you it was such a wonderful uh, sorry listening to you it was such a very thought provoking program every student would have been really you know uh, uh, i would say pushed to or prodded because the story is so very interesting and uh, you know this is uh, today the students are starving they have all the technical knowledge but then if they were wanting to take things forward they need a real uh, hand holding uh, a sort of a Uh, you know the motivational sort of a push on small nudge or small prodding and these kind of uh, people like you coming to the uh, uh, university and uh, helping out uh, uh, is our uh, job is uh, really wonderful and laudable i really really uh, uh, thank you uh, profusely on behalf of uh, uh, our uh, director uh, uh, president uh, uh, sreeni kedan sir as well as uh, anirban sir thank you very much sir you are you are really kind thank you so much thank you uh, uh, let me let me click it. Uh, i have not yet clicked i'll just uh, pin uh, ragu at the center there you go all right okay all of you look at the camera please okay
All right, that's a nice one. Thank you, Raghu. Uh, Thank so you. Till we meet again, sure. till we listen to you again. Uh, so we'll end it today here, and uh, we will uh, hope that uh, we get to meet you in person very soon. Thank you very so much. Part, uh, Have a good evening. Yeah. 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 Thanks for your time. Uh, thanks, Sudarshan, for uh, conducting the program and uh, Vivek sir and all other people. All right. Thank you. Thank you.